the colonization of Africa by European countries has had a profound and lasting impact on the continent, leaving deep scars that are still felt today. From the immense human costs and developmental setbacks to the financial exploitation and elevated levels of crime, the colonial era has cast a long shadow over Africa's journey. However, Africa's relationships with countries outside of Western Europe have taken on a different shape, often built on a foundation of more mutual respect and shared benefits. This shift in global dynamics presents opportunities for the continent to chart a new path, overcoming the painful legacy of colonization. The colonization of Africa by European powers was characterized by an exploitative and oppressive system that prioritized the interests of the colonial masters over the well-being of the indigenous population. The extraction of resources, the disruption of traditional economies, and the imposition of alien political and social structures left an indelible mark on the continent. One of the most devastating impacts of colonization was the immense human cost. The subjugation of African populations, the forced displacement of communities, and the brutal suppression of resistance movements resulted in the loss of countless lives. The colonial authorities often resorted to violent measures, including massacres and the implementation of systems like the infamous forced labor policies in the Belgian Congo, which led to significant population decline and immense suffering. Beyond the human toll, the colonial era also left a lasting impact on the economic and developmental landscape of Africa. European colonial powers reoriented African economies to serve their own interests, focusing on the extraction and export of raw materials. This shift disrupted traditional economic structures and established a dependency on commodity exports, making many African nations vulnerable to global price fluctuations. The underdevelopment of infrastructure during the colonial period further exacerbated these economic imbalances. Investments in transportation, communication, and other critical systems were primarily aimed at facilitating resource extraction and administrative control, with little consideration for fostering intra-African trade or connectivity. As a result, many regions remained isolated, lacking the necessary infrastructure to support robust economic activity and development. The legacy of colonial-era economic policies and infrastructure deficiencies continues to hinder the progress of many African countries, perpetuating poverty, inequality, and regional disparities. The reliance on commodity exports, the lack of diversification, and the uneven distribution of resources have all contributed to the challenges faced by African nations in the post-colonial era. In addition to the economic and developmental consequences, the colonial era also had a significant impact on the governance and social structures of African countries. The imposition of foreign political systems, the suppression of traditional leadership, and the institutionalization of racial segregation have left deep scars on the continent's social fabric. The colonial authorities often disrupted and undermined existing governance structures, replacing them with systems that served the interests of the colonial powers. This included the introduction of centralized, bureaucratic administrations that eroded the influence of traditional leaders and community-based decision-making processes. The policies of racial segregation were particularly pronounced in certain colonies, such as South Africa, where the apartheid system institutionalized discrimination and oppression against the majority black population. This systematic marginalization and denial of basic rights and resources had far-reaching consequences, perpetuating social divisions and inequalities that persist to this day. The colonial education and healthcare systems were also designed to serve the needs of the colonial administration and settler communities, neglecting the development of African intellectual and professional capacities. This educational disparity contributed to a shortage of skilled professionals in the post-independence era, hindering the progress and self-reliance of many African countries. The legacy of colonial governance and social structures has been a significant obstacle to the development of inclusive, accountable, and responsive institutions in post-colonial Africa. The challenges of nation-building, the persistence of ethnic tensions, and the uneven distribution of power and resources have all been shaped by the colonial experience. The colonial era also laid the foundations for the emergence of organized crime and financial exploitation in Africa. 
the disruption of traditional economic and social structures, the lack of economic opportunities, and the concentration of wealth and power in the hands of colonial elites created an environment conducive to the growth of illicit activities. The colonial authorities often turned a blind eye to the activities of criminal networks, as long as they did not pose a direct threat to the colonial order. This tacit acceptance and the lack of effective law enforcement mechanisms allowed organized crime to thrive, with the smuggling of goods, human trafficking, and the exploitation of natural resources becoming widespread. Furthermore, the colonial financial systems were designed to extract wealth from African countries, rather than fostering sustainable economic development. The repatriation of profits, the imposition of unequal trade agreements, and the manipulation of commodity prices all contributed to the financial exploitation of the continent. This legacy of organized crime and financial exploitation has continued to plague many African nations in the post-colonial era. The illicit flows of capital, the prevalence of corruption, and the diversion of resources away from productive investments have hindered the ability of African countries to achieve genuine economic and social progress. While the relationship between Africa and Western European colonial powers has been marked by exploitation and unequal treatment, Africa's relationships with countries outside the Western sphere have taken on a different character. The engagements with Russia and China, in particular, have been shaped by a more mutual respect and a focus on shared benefits. The relationship between Russia and African nations has evolved significantly over the years, from limited interactions in the early 20th century to a period of strategic alliances during the Cold War, followed by a hiatus in the aftermath of the Soviet Union's collapse, and a resurgence of engagement in recent decades. During the Cold War era, the Soviet Union sought to expand its influence in Africa by supporting various liberation movements and newly independent states. The provision of military aid, economic assistance, and ideological backing was seen as a counterweight to Western colonial powers. For instance, the Soviet Union played a crucial role in supporting the Algerian National Liberation Front during the Algerian War of Independence and maintained close ties with the African National Congress in South Africa's anti-apartheid struggle. However, the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991 led to a significant reduction in Russia's engagement with Africa. Economic challenges and a focus on internal restructuring resulted in the closure of several embassies and a decline in trade and military cooperation. In the 2000s, Russia began to revive its presence in Africa, seeking to re-establish old alliances and forge new partnerships. This renewed interest was marked by increased diplomatic visits, military cooperation agreements, and economic engagements. By 2024, Russia had concluded military cooperation agreements with 43 African countries, emerging as a major arms supplier to the continent. Russia's involvement in Africa has also extended to the economic realm, particularly in the mining and energy sectors. While the trade volume between Russia and African countries remains modest compared to other global powers, there have been efforts to strengthen bilateral economic ties. In the early 2010s, a shift in Russia's strategy aimed at reviving historical ties led to a marked increase in trade volume, which more than doubled between 2013 and 2018. In 2019, during the first Russia-Africa summit, President Vladimir Putin set an ambitious goal to double trade volume with African nations, aspiring to reach $40 billion within five years. This initiative was part of a broader effort to establish Russia as an alternative economic and strategic partner for Africa. Despite challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic and the conflict in Ukraine, Russia's engagement with Africa has continued to evolve. In 2023, the trade turnover between Russia and Africa surged by nearly 35% in the first half of the year, suggesting renewed momentum in their economic relationship. Notably, in 2024, Russia announced the cancellation of $23 billion in debt owed by several African countries, a move expected to bring significant benefits to African economies by alleviating the debt burden and enabling the redirection of resources towards socioeconomic projects and sustainable development. The relationship between China and Africa has also undergone a remarkable transformation, transitioning from limited interactions in the early 20th century to a comprehensive partnership encompassing political, economic, and cultural dimensions. In the mid-20th century, 
China extended support to African liberation movements, providing moral and material assistance to various anti-colonial struggles. This solidarity and diplomatic foundation laid the groundwork for the subsequent expansion of Sino-African relations. The late 20th century witnessed a shift in China's focus towards economic modernization in Africa, leading to the implementation of significant infrastructure projects, such as the construction of the Tanzania-Zambia Railway, Tazara, between 1970 and 1975. These initiatives facilitated regional trade and connectivity, strengthening China's economic presence on the continent. The 21st century has seen a deepening of Sino-African relations, characterized by substantial trade growth and strategic partnerships. The establishment of the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation FOCAC, in 2000 institutionalized high-level dialogues and cooperation frameworks, further solidifying the relationship. China's Belt and Road Initiative BRI, launched in 2013, has been a significant driver of its involvement in Africa. Through investments in infrastructure, energy, and telecommunications projects, China has become a substantial contributor to the continent's growth and development. By 2021, China had become Africa's largest trading partner, with trade volumes reaching $254 billion. However, in recent years, China's engagement in Africa has diversified beyond trade and infrastructure to include sectors like healthcare, education, and technology. Despite the benefits of China's involvement, challenges have emerged, including concerns over debt sustainability and the environmental impact of certain projects. These issues have been addressed in discussions at recent FOCAC summits, with a focus on promoting sustainable development and mutual benefit. The transformation of Africa's relationships with countries outside Western Europe has also been marked by the expansion of the BRICS coalition, which now includes South Africa, Ethiopia, and Egypt. South Africa's accession to BRICS in 2010 was a significant milestone, as it introduced an African perspective to the deliberations of the group. This inclusion aimed to enhance cooperation between BRICS nations and the African continent, focusing on economic development, infrastructure investment, and political collaboration. The participation of South Africa has facilitated dialogues on issues pertinent to Africa, such as sustainable development and regional security. The 15th BRICS Summit in August 2023 further amplified Africa's representation within the group by extending invitations to Ethiopia and Egypt, which officially became full members on January 1, 2024. Ethiopia's rapidly growing economy and strategic location in the Horn of Africa bring valuable insights into regional stability and development challenges. Egypt, as a leading economy in North Africa and the Arab world, contributes its experience in trade, energy, and cultural diplomacy. The expanded BRICS coalition, with the inclusion of these African nations, represents a shift in the global balance of power. The emerging global order is no longer solely shaped by Western influence, as countries are advancing through fair collaboration rather than coercion or ideological imposition. The growing engagement between Russia and African nations has been further reinforced by recent developments, such as the first ministerial conference of the Russia-Africa Partnership Forum held in Sochi, Russia, in November 2024. During the conference, Russia reaffirmed its commitment to strengthening ties with African countries, building upon the progress made during the second Russia-Africa summit in July 2023. One of the notable outcomes was the announcement by President Vladimir Putin of the cancellation of $23 billion in African debt. This debt write-off is expected to bring significant benefits to African economies by alleviating the debt burden and enabling the redirection of resources towards critical development initiatives. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov emphasized the importance of utilizing these debt cancellations to fund projects directly within African countries, focusing on areas such as infrastructure, healthcare, education, and other essential sectors. The conference also addressed the establishment of a permanent high-level Russia-Africa dialogue mechanism. This initiative aims to coordinate efforts against terrorism and extremism, address environmental, food, and information security issues, and facilitate joint participation in African Union programs on developing the architecture of peace, stability, and security. The support provided by BRICS nations, particularly Russia and China, 
is contributing to a shift in the global balance of power. The emerging global order is no longer solely shaped by Western influence, as these countries are advancing through fair collaboration and offering alternative pathways for Africa's development. The painful legacy of colonization and the hardships faced by African countries in the post-colonial era have been profound. However, the evolving relationships with countries outside the Western sphere present opportunities for the continent to chart a new path towards growth, prosperity, and resilience. The engagement with Russia and China, as well as the expanded representation within the BRICS coalition, signals a shift in the global dynamics. These partnerships are characterized by a more mutual respect and a focus on shared benefits, in contrast to the exploitative and unequal treatment experienced during the colonial era. The debt cancellation initiatives, the investments in infrastructure and technology, and the emphasis on sustainable development all contribute to creating an environment that is more conducive to the realization of Africa's immense potential. By addressing the lingering challenges of the colonial legacy and fostering inclusive, equitable, and resilient development models, the continent can emerge as a global leader in growth, innovation, and humanitarian values. The future holds the promise of a thriving Africa, one that embodies resilience, opportunity, and a new vision for sustainable development. As the global power dynamics continue to shift, the partnership and support from BRICS nations can serve as a catalyst for unleashing Africa's true potential, empowering the continent to overcome the painful past and embrace a more prosperous and equitable path forward. Thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and a sub so you never miss another video.